So today we're going to do another experiment, another benchmarking um, test, uh, comparing two HTC products. Um, on the left, this is an HTC M9 Plus, and on the right, this is HTC M9. These are two flagship products uh, from HTC. They're not all sold in the United States or Western Europe, but uh, they've been released in various um, parts of the world. Uh, particularly the, these two I bought in uh, in Asia. What's interesting about these phones, similarly to the previous uh, test benchmark that we published um, earlier last year, is that um, these two phones, while made by the same manufacturer, uh, HTC, and both are the flagship devices, are powered by different chipsets. On the left, this is M9 Plus by HTC powered by MediaTek 6795 also known as Helio X10 baseband processor and on the right this is a device powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 as of today these are two flagship processors from MediaTek and Qualcomm so it gives us a very unique uh, and interesting opportunity to compare two products with two flagship processors from the same device maker. Let's power them up. So as in previous benchmarks I published, um, the benchmarking tool of choice uh, for me today will be uh, Antutu to Benchmark. Why? Because it runs a whole uh, array of different tests, including the single core, multi core user interface, and graphics. Um, and so it's a reasonable um, way to compare the devices, especially if you're trying to focus on the baseband microprocessors. So uh, let me fire up the um, and to two uh, benchmarks on both devices. Notice that uh, unlike in previous test, um, both devices are in the airplane mode, so there's no connection. They've just been freshly powered up, so there's really nothing going on right now uh, in terms of the device connectivity. Um, hopefully this will eliminate any questions about um, devices doing different things at different times. So let's fire up the Antutu 2. Alright, so as you can see, both devices are running Antutu Benchmark version 571. That's the one I currently have installed on these devices. Um, first, let's take a look at uh, what's under the hood. So if you go into the info, um, you should be able to get the summary. So as I mentioned before, HTC M9 Plus on the left, HTC M9 on the right. Both are powered by 8-core microprocessors. One on the left is from MediaTek, 6795 Turbo version with the power vr graphics the one on the right is a qualcomm processor um, doesn't specify which one but uh, we know it's a snapdragon 810 uh, with the adreno uh, 430 um, graphics um, one point that's probably important to notice is that the screen resolution is not the same the device on the left is 1440 by 2560 so it's a higher resolution screen uh, which means uh, more pixels to process uh, and render on the screen and more work for the graphics processors. Um, it, uh, depending how it's implemented in Anto 2, uh, it may uh, give the device on the left a disadvantage. All right, so I think now we can begin the test. Okay, so the test finished. Let's go back to the result. Okay, so as you can see, the device on the left, uh, the MediaTek-based, scored 54,000 
uh, and 15 uh, and 2 2 points and device on the right scored 51 968 all right so those are the results so let's take a closer look of what they're composed of click on the result now it's noticed that it says uh, what is not verified um, this is basically an explanation saying that the device uh, data hasn't been verified why because um, I turned off Wi-Fi while I was running the um, the test and so um, to avoid any kind of uh, test contamination by background processors so both devices are showing that they are not um, been able to verify the device because they don't know what the devices are there's no network connection but I think we'll ignore that for, for now so we're looking at user interface type of test multitask runtime environment um, a little better here on the MediaTek side uh, slightly uh, better on the runtime side from Qualcomm um, we had here on the CPU integer performance and also on the floating point performance roughly on par on a single thread um, where else is a difference RAM operation substantially better on the left and then finally graphics performance is substantially better for 3D performance um, on uh, Qualcomm chip um, notice again the resolution is different this is a higher resolution screen than this one this may affect the um, the calculation. Um, the other thing that most likely will affect the calculation is that we know that uh, Snapdragon 810 is advertised as a CPU that can process, its graphics processor can process up to 4K video versus the uh, Helio X10 is not designed for 4K, it's designed for um, up to Quad HD which is what this, um, this device has. So with that in mind um, the Snapdragon A10 should be way over designed for this screen resolution, which is probably reflected in the score here. But overall, uh, 5400 versus 5100 uh, in favor of MediaTek. One other thing I wanted to do is to see how the device performs under stress. What I mean by that is that if we put the device under stress by running um, in CPU intensive application uh, on it, um, the way the microprocessor uh, copes with it is by trying to maintain um, optimal um, working temperature and if the device gets too hot uh, which we all heard uh, some rumors and speculations about Qualcomm having issues with the overheating um, then the device will try to reduce the performance uh, which is called thermothrottling uh, basically if the car runs too hot you slow it down uh, same idea for the microprocessors so what I had in mind is to run this um, N22 benchmark um, several times because it's a very intense benchmark, it exercises all parts of the processor, it should put it on its toes um, and see how the performance uh, behaves, how the benchmark numbers behave um, if you were to repeat this uh, benchmark uh, a few times in a row. So this is the result for the first run, let's do it again. Test again, test again, test again. Let's go. Okay, so this is the second round that just finished. Let's take a look at the result. All right, we are at uh, 51.9 on the left, uh, MediaTek based, 45.6 on the right. Do it again. Very simple. See what the result is going to be on uh, Snapdragon. All right, and here's the result for the Snapdragon 44. 
So um, we can calculate the the difference, but you can clearly see that uh, uh, performance deterioration uh, with um, under the um, uh, under stress under uh, heavy load. One other thing I wanted to show you today. This is something I've shown to you before uh, on my previous tests. Uh, there's a interesting bit of information you can extract if you go into the CPU and click on cores and do the same thing uh, on this side. Okay, so here you can clearly see it says Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 versus the uh, MediaTek 6795 64-bit um, processors, 8 cores, okay here we go. So this one is up to 2158 megahertz, so 20 22.2 gigahertz processor and here it's up to 2 gigahertz processor but this is not what I want to show you so both processors are fairly idle right now so there's nothing going on in the background not much anyway just running Android so the CPU load overall is 7% 3% and it kind of stays at that level less than 10% what's interesting is that you can monitor the activity of the cores so this are cores 0 through 8 0 through 8 and same thing on the left. Notice on the left the MediaTek um, Helio processor all seven cores except for the core number one are basically are asleep and the core zero, first core, runs at full uh, full speed. You can see that from time to time other cores wake up but for the most part they're staying asleep. What's interesting is to contrast that with activity on the Qualcomm side. Um, as in previous experiment <coughs> the four um, cores first cores 0 through 4 are active at um, about 70% of their performance, maximum performance, and then others are active uh, at uh, further at slower speed. What's interesting is that they don't they don't go to, to sleep completely, right? They're, they remain active despite the fact that the overall processing requirements, the workload for CPU is very, very minor, 5% in this case. Notice here, if you try to wake it up, you do something with the monitor, you can see how other cores are waking up, right? And then they go back to sleep. Let's do the same thing here. Basically, not much is changing. So, four cores running at 1.5 gigahertz and remaining run at 600 megahertz, uh, more or less. Um, an educated guess would be that something that is staying awake full time would draw more current than something that goes to sleep. So that's it. These are the results of this test today. Hope you uh, find it useful and uh, till next time.